And, uh, the committees all have staff now, in addition to right. the individual staff of the members? Exactly. And, and it seemed to me that if you can't analyze a bill, you ought not to be running for the legislature. You ought to wait till you can analyze a bill and then, <laughs> then run for the legislature. Now, that 1969-70 that session was your final one? That was my final one, yeah. You, you decided to retire from the legislature and... Uh, in in 1950, 1964, <coughs> I decided that I was not going to run again in 68 or 70. And I didn't tell anybody because, uh, because that would have created a vacuum in my district that I didn't want it filled by anybody, but I wanted to do the filling myself. Mm -hmm. And and the Philly was and the uh, Philly, Bill Bryant. Uh, was Bill Bryant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he might not like that, but the Philly <laughs> was Bill Bryant. Phil E. <laughs> the Philly replaced the stud. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. to talk, so, talk about your relationship with Bill. I, I, what? Was was I think Bill was is a relative, isn't he? Uh, was well, he he's not a, a relative a nephew of mine, but he's my kid's third cousin. Oh, okay. Okay. And, and you were, you were very proud of Bill, I know. You uh, spent Oh, time. he was a good friend of mine and and uh, he and I've been close. And so I wanted to make sure that uh, that uh, that district was represented by a non-cook. Okay. In January 1971, you joined the American Petroleum Institute as the Michigan office's yeah, uh, yeah. executive director and re you replaced Bill Palmer. Former Senator Palmer, right, who had served uh, with the API for a long, long time. I guess so, since the, <laughs> off and on since the 30s. 1938 is when he was first yeah. hired, yep. uh, and you walked smack dab into the OPEC energy crisis of the 70s uh, right. as the API director. And well, I, that I, was pretty exciting. And I, well, I know you're also very proud of that of the of the tenure with API and the service with the oil industry, but those were had to be some pretty uh, fascinating times. Well, I don't. I remember. I remember the legislature better than that. But uh, they were, and we had to explain the industry to the people as much as anything else. And and I can remember sitting in a in a meeting, great big meeting on the fourth floor of the of the Capitol, and the, and the room. This was a meeting conducted by Tom Anderson, who was a real good guy. My next door neighbor. Right, it, yeah, uh, down, right. down, down, down the river. The, right. And uh, we had three PhDs. This, this is one of those big rooms, half as big as this on the fourth floor. We had three PhDs there. And we had a meeting that went, lasted, oh, I don't know, an hour and a half or over what, what they're going to do about all this stuff. And, and not once was the word price mentioned P-R-I-C-E, and, uh, and I said to Tom, I said, let me give these guys a 15-minute lecture, and Tom said, oh, I know what you're going to say. We know all, all about that anyway, but let these guys pop off. And, and we were in a situation that was exacerbated by the federal government, by President Nixon putting on price controls and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, otherwise, we'd have, we'd have gotten out of the mess a lot sooner. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had lines in this country at the service stations. That means gas stations to most people. And uh, but they didn't in Europe because they let the price regulate where the demand was going to be. And and uh, so we got it all screwed up. But I remember we were working hard on that. And then during all that time. Uh, oh, we had tax battles, and we had where we're going to drill, drill in the Arctic Circle, or drill on the offshore. And Pigeon River. All that stuff, pardon me. The Pigeon River came the, up. Oh, the Pigeon River thing, but that was mainly the M M Michigan Oil and Gas Association. Yes. Mm -hmm. You were engaged in the debate over the Joint Rules Committee. The, the, uh, the uh, API, uh, I was not representing the API. I don't know whether you know yes, that. Yes, I do know that. I was not representing the API. However, they did not object to my political activities in that direction. What it, what it amounted to was the, uh, they tried to put a, a constitutional amendment that would allow the 
the administrative rules committee to uh, veto any administrative rule. I think that's about the size of it, and uh, which is, which, in, which in my opinion was not only is unconstitutional federally wise, <coughs> and I it's possible. I don't know whether it'd be statewide or not, but it, it you could argue. But that's irrelevant if it's if it's unconstitutionally federally wise. But that plan actually got on the ballot. That got on the ballot, and uh, there were all sorts of people for it, including the state chamber, the Farm Bureau, AAA. God, I don't know how many people. So somebody called me from CBS in Detroit and said, "Well, you're the only organized person against it." And uh, I said, yeah, I suppose so. And, and uh, But I did some lobbying with all the newspapers mm -hmm. and that sort of stuff and explained the whole business. Not that they weren't smart enough to figure it out for themselves. And I wrote a piece that I put out to 124 local newspapers and some other stuff. I spent a, a oh, well, I spent $124. I don't know how many newspapers it went to. And uh, we finally had a vote on this thing, and I won by a half a million votes, I think. <laughs> but Glenn Allen said, well, they always vote something down they don't <laughs> understand. So, so he just sort of undermined my euphoria, but I, but I made me a little more humble. Well, I also but, think, didn't you get a call from, a, from the governor? Uh, oh following yeah, the yeah. Election. were you there then? No, you were. No, there. you you. Uh, you I got a call that. from the from Governor Blanchard the next day, well the, the next morning, as a matter of fact, uh, Jim Barrett passed me on Grand Avenue and he waved to me and he said, did, did, did he use his full hand or just just, <laughs> just no, one no, finger? Full, <laughs> hand, full hand. Uh, he didn't give me the the family <laughs> gesture. Uh, he 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 waved his hand and congratulated me. Then I got to the office, and somebody said the governor was on the phone. That was Governor Blanchard, and uh, so he got on the phone and he said, "He said, Bob, I want to tell you, I want to thank you. You saved my ass." And <laughs> that's exactly what he said. And I said, "Well, I think you you deserved you, you, this had to be anyway." So, but that was very nice of him. Yeah, that was. I think Rick Cole got him to do that, but. But you had a, you had a good relationship with with Governor Blanchard, as I know you do with Governor Engler. Well, I yeah, but I had uh, I didn't know Governor Blanchard too well, but we had a good relationship. He now you spent a lot of time in the in the public domain, uh, as uh, as did the Eternal General uh, Frank Kelly. Uh, you I know that you know we had had some meetings together with with Mr. Kelly. I wonder what kind of 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 working relationship you had with Frank through all the years. Oh, know. I I have never had it. He's never gotten the only time that that Frank has ever bothered me or the Attorney General's office, and that, that wasn't necessarily under Frank either. It was before Frank. Was that uh, they would they would have opinions on legislation that uh, that weren't necessarily sound. And that we we didn't feel that we had to pay all that much attention to them, but it wasn't a big deal. They weren't. They didn't come in thick and fast. And, and uh, but when Kelly got in there and stayed in there longer and longer and longer, these these opinions sort of proliferated and 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 were easier to get and and uh, became more troublesome. And then you had stuff like. And I'm not sure of this. Uh, they had stuff like representing both sides on, mm -hmm. on the Public Service Commission. And I don't know that there's a statute that uh, tells them that they can represent the public. Is there? I didn't think so. So, <coughs> I mean, that's something that Frank Kelly developed. <coughs> and that's something that most lawyers just, just can't believe is happening. And yet they 